Gather veterans, it's time to join the fight. The long war begins. This is The Long War. I'm Rob Bear, and joining me once again are my partners in crime, Kenny Boucher and Wyatt Turk. What's up, guys? Yo, dog, great to be here. Yo, what's up? So I, I learned I learned a lot of things today. Yeah? Uh, been, been watching PPS? <laughs> no, I, I I can't do TTS. No, I said PBS. Oh, PBS? Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. Dude, Mr. Mr. Rogers fought for that shit. Um, I learned that, uh, that Kenny's, uh, a big, a big robot fighter. What, what was it? And I'm just, uh, I'm just a, a deck flipper. I'm just a, just a casual deck flipper. Did I even say that? You definitely said that. I mean, I like it. I'm, I'm, you're like, uh, no, you're like, I want to be a punchy robot guy. You're like, suck those deck flippers. And I'm like, I'm a deck flipper. Sounds like something I said. <laughs> sounds like something I said which you, though you're taking it out of context I'll stand by it <laughs> stand by it <laughs> but uh oh man so Rob was really heated about something earlier you guys missed it in the pregame show don't worry it wasn't racist yeah it, not we don't this, know yet he not told this. Us. I mean he told us yeah you're right he actually he's, hasn't told us. Doing it live. Let's do it live. So. so, oh, you guys are gonna like this. I usually like the things. Or don't. Say. Whatever. I, well, I usually like your reactions to things. That it reminds me that I chose the correct path in life in my approach to thinking about things and outrage. You say you make me feel better about myself. I don't know. I have a. I have like a roller coaster approach to like. I get. I'm like, eh. no, I'm, I'm, like, I'm eh, saying really I, that bad. I'm okay. saying thank you, dude. Like, you're awesome. Is that a what do they call that in the South? When you what? like say something nice to somebody, but you really say something mean. Oh, back in the compliment. Veiled insult or something. Yeah, that's a, both of those. Yeah. Back in a compliment <laughs> or a veiled insult, which is what a back in. I love that. I love that. Thank you, guys. I'm learning a lot of new things. My mom walked me through a bunch of cool uh, uh, vocabulary stuff the other day. I was like, mom, I don't know what these 15 things mean. And I've been too embarrassed to ask for years. <laughs> can, <laughs> can, you t- can you tell me? I like learning new stuff. What you think of your, uh, your uh, hot fire social, uh, social content, your tutorial content lately? My mom's my, my mom's my biggest fan. My dad doesn't quite understand some of the things I do. Uh, does she does she know about the car lizard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a okay. big she's a big fan. I mean, she's she's all in on the boner pills, everything. She's like, she backs me. My dad was very scandalized by it. <laughs> uh, of course. The uh, oh, I mean, my dad is kind of, my dad gets scandalized by some wild boomer shit though. Like the other day, we're, like we're sitting down to have dinner, and I was like, "Yo, does anyone need a drink?" And my dad's like, oh, you know what? I think I'm going to have like a tea, like a hot tea. And yep. I was I was like, that sounds lovely. I think I'll have one, too. And my dad's like, you're banned from saying that in this house. And I was like, but he was like joking. But like, he said, I was like, my, my, and my mom was like, what? Why? I was like, oh, mom, it's because it's he doesn't view that phrasing as a masculine uh, way to respond to a statement. And it made him uncomfortable that his son responded that way. So this is how he's kind of covered up that discomfort. And my mom just laughed at my dad in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, be be a man. Yeah. So he struggles with certain concepts, as you can see. So when I come home with a pack of boner pills, I'm like, yo, look what I got. My mom's like, tight. And my dad's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. We have a uh, award-winning segment. So my Instagram escapades in Florida are less important than what's about to happen. So let's roll out to White's Cave of Wonders and touch nothing but the lamp. Would you rather no longer need to sleep, but you always feel kind of tired or never feel tired, but you still get to sleep every night? 
feel like you just described every day of my the life. first one you described. The second one would be amazing, though. The second one is I say I, I, I never feel tired, but I still have to sleep. Yeah, 100 yeah. percent. I'm never tired till I'm till I'm asleep. And then it's like because currently I'm always tired no matter what. So, but, but I'm never really tired until I'm asleep. And see, so like, so my logic is if I'm tired all the time, might as well get productivity. Okay. So let me ask your hours of the day. Okay. Genie, genie time. Okay. So am I still getting the healthy amount of sleep medically that my body requires, regardless of the choice I choose? Yeah. So if I'm up all the time and is it like, is it, I'm healthily still sleeping though I feel tired all the time? Like body processes, everything like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. And if I'm never tired, but I sleep, still the same thing I'm getting. Yeah. So, so wait, this might be gameable because right now I'm certainly not getting healthy sleep and I'm tired. So Dude, my, my phone, my phone fucking shames me. It texts me every morning. It's like, hey, stupid. It doesn't say that unless you told it to. No, it does about my sleep. It Is thinks that, it. It thinks it knows. It doesn't know shit, dude. It's a robot. It does. So it, it does. Me it like, does know or it doesn't know. No, it does. It's like, man, it tells me all sorts of shit. So it knows that you're sleeping poorly. Yeah, this thing like straight shames me and so, then grades me. It grades my sleep. So why do you just just disable it, dude? Like, who cares? No, I gotta know. Is Rob? Is Rob? Rob? Is your uh, like exercise routine, like just standing in front of the near the mirror naked, like screaming at yourself. What do you mean exercise? Because that's what, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it like tells me it's like because that's because that's what it seems like. He want you want to be shamed and yelled and like almost like desperately. Like, so I'm just no, I just like all the information. He needs to know, but he hates the information that he gets every time. <laughs> I would take then no sleep, always tired, and but my body gets the sleep it needs somehow magically. Now, that, like this, because because these are these are gameable questions by nature. Like one of them is I feel better than I normally feel, still have to sleep. One of them is fuck it, I can do more now. But I'm true. always tired, so I'm already kind of always tired. Oh, wait, hold on a second. No matter what I do, I'm tired. Oh, yeah. There's no like caffeine gaming this. Oh, there's no Adderall. You're, there's no. You're just, just going to feel a little sleep G all the time. Okay. That's not good. I, there's no way. So it permeates. It's the priority feeling at all times. Mm-hmm. How, how tired? Yeah. How tired? I'm a little tired. I'm always a little tired. Like for most people, how you feel right now at like 8 p.m. Uh, no, I can't. I can't. I I like the things I like too much. So I'm just going to go with the one I should choose, which is I feel well rested. Always, but I still have to sleep. That's I'll go with that. Fuck it. I'll just make the adult decision here. I will just take the win that I feel better than I normally feel. (laughs) Thanks, Jenny. (laughs) I guess. Yeah, I guess if I had to pick, I guess maybe the second one, but. I don't know. No. As much as I want to do the other one, I'm like, wait a minute, it's going to fuck me somewhere. Like, uh, like lots of things I like to do in the day are not going to have an effect on me. Like what I'm trying to alter my chemical state of mind. I try to take a nap, but like that shit, it's hard to do. It's hard. It's hard to fit it in. You know, I've not, I've not mastered naps just yet. No, can't do them. They fuck me. Every time. Like, there's always, yeah. there's always some dumb shit going on that I like have to go do. Oh no. See my problem is opposite. Like once I get a nap in, I, I nap for way too long oh. and I wake mm-hmm. up and I feel like I have time traveled and I've been asleep for like a week. <laughs> well, that's you got to sleep in like the what is it? 90 minute REM. Like always try to sleep Bro, and plan your sleeps in 90 minutes. I try minutes. every time I try. I'm like, I'm just going to go. I'm going to shut my eyes for like an hour. I'll even set an alarm. An hour is not good. That's why you're that's why you're waking up terribly. No, but I'll sleep for like three hours. 
that's the problem. It's like I'll sleep for a three or four, and then I'll wake up, and it's like oh, it's fucking. I just can't. Yeah. I, I I basically yeah. j- I'll take a nap, and the whole time I'm napping for whatever time I set is like oh I'm, I have to wake up any second. I have to wake up any second. You know what I mean? Like that feeling. So it's just the most garbage sleep possible every time. It always fails me. Fuck naps. It's always horrible. So Fair. the genie's provided me with a very solid solution here. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess it ain't bad. <laughs> Caraquin says you'll mature to naps. My parents are like religious about their nap game. It's like, oh, it's two o'clock. Let's go take naps. And then it's like flawless every day. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm jealous. Mm. All right. Good one. Rob, you want to jump into the news? You got something spicy for us? Rob, yeah, prom- some- Rob promises something spicy. All right. Well, let's just, uh, let's just cover the bases real quick. So, um, New GW products hit in pre-order this week, all the uh, Necromunda stuff, the Vansar, Arachna rig, those little mobile suits, uh, $50. New Necromunda rule book, $50. Vehicle cards, 20 bucks. Some Black Library books. Uh, they bumped the Warhammer Underworld's Death Chords to this week, so it's $95 for that box set. Um, and the... OP kit for Death Gorge as well. If you know your store wants to play that, it's eighty dollars. By the way, I um the dumpster wars people hit me up again. They're like, "Yo, what's this shit?" And I'm like, "I don't know. What is it? Send me pics." And it was it was all the Sigmar and Warhammer Underworlds OP kits that had come out in the last like two years. Hundreds of them. Yeah, you showed us pictures of it. No, no, that was... Did I? Of the OP kits? The, with the little glass trophies and the little card packs? Yeah, you told us about this last time. The tournament packs? Yeah, like, nobody bought that shit. Yeah. You said so like, you had pictures of this. Has this happened again? Oh, oh ma- no, wait. Maybe it wasn't AOS last time. It was something else. No, no it, was, it was. Yeah. Like, anyways. So, yeah, that, that happened. So, right, good, job, like, okay, any- good job on this acquisition. They're like, hey, you got any uh you got any actual product? And they're like, nah, it's been a while. And I was like, yeah, because they throttled back their uh their production. They they they're over the bubble now. Anyways, um so there's that. Uh new Shatterpoint missions are coming out November 3rd. Uh, if you're into Shatterpoint, it looks pretty fresh. Uh what I like most about it is that the, the little objective symbols, um, for the different things you can roll on a dice, they actually give you objectives to put down. So you don't have to look at the card and then look back and then figure out and look because each top of the round, you got to roll to see where the objectives move to uh, similar to 40 K a little bit. Um, so that's really neat. So there's going to be, it's more close in, but now we've got the first leaks of, of what it's the, the pack's actually going to look like. Big, so that's pretty cool. Game aids. Got it. Game aids. Yep. Got to have the game aids. Um, there is a new comic strip out there. I don't know if you uh, have read the site uh, this Monday, but we featured the last uh, week or so of them. It's called Barrel Drillers. <laughs> nice. It's uh, it's a pretty cool strip because it basically has the stereotypes of every game store and every friend group and friend gamer group out there, right? Um, and I think I think if you read it, you'll get a chuckle out of it because it's. You're like, you can, you know, in your group who the characters are, and then you know who you are, you know, out of these, these guys. And it's just like, it's just like, let's see what dumb shit they do this week, you know, or, and they actually publish it daily. And we feature the last weeks, um, on the site, you know, in case you miss it, or if you, you know, see it and you want to go pick it up and start, you know, start, start reading that they have a Patreon too. It's definitely fun. It reminds me of Trin Signals on a Land Raider. And uh, which I thoroughly enjoyed, and I'm personal friends with uh, with those guys for way too long. Will not divulge the number of years, but uh, one thousand years. A certain a certain logo out there might might have been drawn by a certain artist. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, 
Battle Force rumors for Christmas. It looks like the stuff that has leaked uh, for contents. We saw a rumored picture today, which looks pretty authentic. Um, to be a whole lot of Photoshop work to to fake that one. And for the uh, the guard uh, the guard one. So if it is the case, uh, I hope that the Battle Forces are two hundred thirty dollars because there's some really good value in there. Remember, two hundred thirty is the uh, new price for 2023 price increases. They were 210 last year. Even then, you know, there's, there's some naysayers out there like, ah, maybe it's not good value, but I think at these price, if they keep it at 230, I think there's some solid value and we're going to see, you know, uh, definitely people picking them up and start starting new armies out there because time times are tough. Oh, there's somebody posted the link to the uh, barrel drills. Thank you. Uh, in chat there, so definitely check it out. Uh, I think it's I think it's a good uh, good little fun comic strip. So, if I had to guess, I think GW is kind of doing things a little different when it comes to um, their guerrilla their guerrilla marketing. Whereas they are leaking things either through a fictitious. Um, entity or username or rumor name or discord name yep. to places to to people that are have have some sort of you know platform or post regularly in another platform uh, we saw it with the old world like some people got uh the uh, have already gotten some of the bretonian stuff some of the flesh eater stuff is out there right we've seen shit hit ebay guys this is not by coincidence. No, this is obvious the, for years. I mean, these and, and okay, these are allegedly leaks by Games Workshop to specific people out there. Uh, it would be stupid for them not to huh. do that, and that and that's great because it you know it, it, it keeps the hobby going. To me, that's like the whole reason like they create a warcom, like was to well, is, well, here's the was, thing. was to to control that. Yes, and how why they started the influence the, the influencer program and why they give stuff to people. But unfortunately, they're giving stuff to people that's the same amount that game stores are getting. And we could go down a whole rabbit hole about how game stores are going to change in the next five to ten years. You know, you got New York Toy Toy Fair this weekend. You know, you, you got comic book manufacturers and shit, people from Disney that own Dark Horse, you know, they're they're all saying. You know, in the future, stores are going to be, you know, because everybody's trying to go direct market to get that bigger piece of the pie, right? It doesn't doesn't matter who you are. Everybody's trying to do it. And they're, they're already, a lot of them are already doing it. But at some point, you still need these stores. And yeah. at some point, you know, it'll just be like the the, the convenience stores where the, the merchandise, the extra merchandise in the space behind the counter is paid for by certain brands, right? So at some point, Games Workshop, you're going to have to pay game stores to stock your shit because they're not gonna, and they're not going to stock it in the amount that you want. And there's going to be less game stores. We, we, we are over the hump where it's slowing up. Yeah. There's a lot of less money out there right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that funny. free money from COVID it's, it's drying up and it's going to be gone soon. And there's going to be a lot less accounts and a lot less game stores out there. And as brands continue to go direct market, they're going to have to incentivize stores to even carry their shit or basically disappear. Yeah, because it's a it's a double edged sword of we want more of the pie, but nobody knows our shit exists if they don't go places to experience our shit. So, like. Yeah. There's a relationship that can't, that is, it's a, that's there, that it can't be. So you're right. It's like people have like the gas station contract, like you were saying. It's like, it's, that's a really, I think that's a really <laughs> well thought out example, man. Like, there's a reason when you look behind that counter that you see what you see and why the shit in front of the counter is what you see. It's not because, it's not because they just randomly put shit up there. They are paid to do it. Mm hmm. That's yeah. it. Uh, Back. So any, anyways, uh, that's that's just some wild shit. So Battle Force is looking fresh uh, already, uh, definitely. Now, I couldn't really talk about this last week, but the Army Painter has some new paints coming out. They're called Fanatic. Um, they're uh, really well done, from what I can tell. Through a little bit of happenstance, I actually already got some. Uh, I wasn't supposed to, but I did. 
And that's a whole nother story. And I was like, hey, tell your people like they're fucking up. And that, that's a whole nother story. But anyways, um, so it's basically if you remember Citadel Foundation paints. Yeah. High pigment base coat style paints. Yes. So think of that, but even more high, high highly pigmented uh, colors. There's going to be a whopping like 210 of these things like that. If you envision the, the that makes sense. Painter, that makes sense. Like, that? I feel like that makes sense. I mean, I've, I know a little bit about them already. Like I've seen some people and talked to some people. That's it. To me, it's like they're calling it a new paint line, but it's just like the evolution of their formula as a right. company. Like it's they as a company that ca- their foundation has been dipping, moving into wash tech. That's like their R and D. Their R and D department was like a hundred percent about that, like army painting technique. And so mm-hmm. that's why I love their wash game so much is because it's where it's where like the original R and D lay, you know, like in their heavy bodied, low stain wash mechanic, their paints always lag behind. Now, they've had a reasonably the same amount of years to do R and D and paints. And now this makes sense to me that they would have a line of paints that simulated the old foundation era. Cause that was like the first boom in painting for yeah. Warhammer 40 K was no one was using airbrushes. Here's a paint. That's basically one coat, one and done raw dogging. And here are the colors and here are the old wash days, like devil and mud wash days. And then you can wash your shit pretty well and have a really solid result. That was the that was all that happened before contrast and all that shit and speed painting was just you're just painting the guy's pants first, this color, then that color, then this. And it's all one and done coverage, easily controlled. And then you wash it with the appropriate colors. This sounds like a great fit for Barbie painter like this exact this style of painting seems to be perfect with their wash mechanic. Do you think, do you think there's a chance, Kenny, that, that that technique you just talked about from Games Workshop, do you think there's a chance that maybe, that maybe the people at Army Painter had, no, that's, that's crazy. There's it's no al- way it's that al- it's same almost, people are It's almost like, this. it's almost like. The same they, actual people? It's almost like the respond- same actual people. Huh. Yeah. That's uh, wild. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. How's uh, this, how's that? Good for them. Good for them that they're finally putting out a that that paint makes sense. I'm I'm proud of them. Like that's awesome. Um yeah, Army Army Paper Army Painter makes a lot of sense. I've been using their shit since it came out in 2007. I mean, I, I literally have my first war paints over there where I was painting a Death Guard army in a weekend. You know, like it's the shit's good and it's, I it's just, evolved. I, I just remember I just, that I just remember that boom. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like the fucking foundation paint, yeah, devil and mud. Like that was the most of, that was the first time I saw a ton of people painted armies. Well, I mean, if if you think about it, the reason that the reason that Vallejo got such a foothold in the States is because it was the first thing that was actually dedicated to miniatures in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. And it was the high pigmented, very, very vibrant colors that that literally matched GW's uh, line as well at the time. Yeah, the, the fir- they were the first looked- first real alternative to Citadel. Right. It looked visually different. So they basically combined what Vallejo did in the early 2000s and what they knew works. Right. And they're putting out a, a, a better, a better product. Like overall, and this will replace the war paints. Yeah, I assumed it would. Like I didn't I, I was like, this is not like an, this is the evolution of their line because I, I their paints has always lagged behind. Like yeah. they, they've had issues in the past with how to even ship it. And it's always had issues with stick, with coverage, with medium to pigment ratios. And they, and they've refined it over the years. And I think their airbrush line is was the best version of their war paint line yeah, uh, because at least it was super consistent across the board. But this is this to me, like that's nonsense. This should be the, it should be the foundation style painting. That's that. Yes. That makes perfect focus. That's, that's awesome to hear from them. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be well. No, I actually had a chance to hobby. Well, I've been hobbying over the past week in small blocks. And what what I have here is uh, for those of you that can see it live is I took I printed out some little uh, little bottle toppers for the speed paint line, 
and glued them onto the actual speed paints. But I did the. <laughs> That's so gangster. <laughs> you could call it. I, I guess everybody calls it slap chop. It's value highlighting. No, no, I'm saying like you printed out bottle cap lids. Yeah, they're little gems. You can get them off cults. They got skulls. I was like, ah, oh, the little rocks are cool. That's so, so sick. So that way I can actually see what the paint's going to look like over. I fucking know, love that, dude. The that, slap chop. That is genius, dude. I I love and, that. And I mean, I can pick it up and I can be like, oh, shit, that's a green. What you know? a what a fucking cute idea that is so useful, dude. Like that's. And you just, you know, if you got to buy a new paint, you just you just reuse the cap. It's, it's, gen- it's genius, dude. It's fucking genius. Respect. Res- I'm pretty happy with that one. Um, but you can find them over on cults. If you want to, if you want to print them out, the little bottle toppers, they got a bunch of different ones. Um, so I was really enjoying that. Now let's talk, <laughs> let's talk more about games. Rushad guys. So where are we at? Where, where are we at with ordering? What, we, what is it? Every two weeks now? Is that where we're at? No one except you knows. <laughs> that is true because a lot of stores don't even know what the fuck they can even order this week. They're just like, what do, what do I even order this week? Like, what what is up for order? I don't, I don't even know anymore. Uh, so two-week pre-orders are here for the foreseeable future from Games Workshop, y'all. Um, which, I don't know. Insert reason here. Uh, you, warehousing you, issues. Your reason was that student debt last month, last week. I mean, maybe it's that. I, I think it was I think, an interesting I, I think that's your I think that's your best fucking conspiracy theory yet. I think because it makes so much logical sense. That you, you would be aware of your demographic, your age group. Yes. Uh, economics that affected that age group, especially as a multiple hundred million dollar company. And you would make decisions based on your predictions of their spending habits and the money that they're going to have. Right. Like, yes. So I, I do agree with you. overall. I think that's um, your strongest. I think that's the strongest observation you made on the subject. And so we're going to, so the two week pre-order model it seems to be motivated at least somewhat by that. Yeah. I mean, they have, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. A lo- uh, I I had a long, very long conversation over the weekend with a, a very large game store. Um, How large? A very, very big. It's a very, it's a very big thriving business. And uh, I, I kind of felt like the dude was on, the edge of tears and just over the last couple of weeks, you know, from, for on, he's like the new Marine shit ain't selling. I sold some books, uh, the new magic, Dr. Who, you know, we're selling one deck. There's four different decks. Only one of the decks is selling. Um, he's like, nobody's buying shit. We, you know, we, you know, all, all this stuff. And I'm like, you know, I'm trying to give them some, some hot fire. I'm like, everybody's got to, everybody's pivoting. You know, they're going to the subscription model. They're going to the lifestyle model. You got to give, you got to, you got to get back to that clubhouse. You got to give the uh, folks a reason. Even, even Wizards of the Coast this week shifted focus. There's <laughs> Kenny, you, you used to sell magic cards, right? It's your store. It's the only reason I had a store, dude. Right. There was one there was one pack of cards, right? Well, I don't know if I don't know if you keep in track, but I don't well there was just there was there was only whatever with the current shit that was out was. Right. So the current shit for each, That's each it. release. There's one current shit at a time. Right. But it, the current shit now is I don't know if you know this, but I'm just gonna throw it out there. So uh a collector packs, which run from anywhere from twenty five to seventy five dollars a pack, a pack of cards, magic cards. Yikes. Uh, set boosters, which is what traditionally Yeah, that's was. what we had. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the normal packs. Draft boosters, which obviously you fucking draft with. Um, they're commander decks, which there's usually a couple of three to four ish. Um, and then, you know, your pre release packs and different things, gift boxes and so on. So they don't call them fat packs anymore. Um, so this week, Wizards is like, oh, these two different types of booster packs, we've been fucking up. We're just going to make one booster pack now. We're going back to the one booster pack, guys. It's going to be a pl- the play pack. And then there are like all these reasons, you know, because Magic players is all about value. They got to have their value. They got to have the rares. They got to have, they got to make sure they're not going to get a bunch of commons and all this bullshit and blah, 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 blah. Um, so they're like reasoning it out. And it's all good reasons. And then I don't think they fumbled it all. It's great. 
to get back to that. But even the mighty wizards of the coast. Is pulling back the amount of product they're fucking. Yeah. Yes. So I feel like Games Workshop is actually in the right here doing the two week pre-order. But wait, wait, guys, there's more. So this week, Games Workshop lets all their trade partners know, at least here in the States, North America, which is a lot of a lot of accounts. They're like, hey guys, check it out. We I'm paraphrasing, of course. Uh, we know none of you fucking know, even know what you're supposed to order this week because it's all weird. Um, but good news. So you know, every Sunday when we put out on the site a war com where this fictitious author who nobody fucking knows, and it's not even a real name, puts out an article that's, here's all the shit coming out this week, guys. Well, we know that everybody hits you up, and they're like, hey, I want to pre-order this. But we know that you can't take the pre-order because you don't even know how much they were charging for it or nothing like that. So guess what? Good news. Same day, we're going to send you a spreadsheet. With all with all those releases and how and the price they are, and we want to know, we want uh, you to fill out this spreadsheet I within see, two days. I see where this is going two, again. God damn it! Within two days, they're doing they're spread- doing the Indominus box fiasco again. Oh my god, GW! This is upsetting. We, every week, every week they're going to do it. Oh my we want to know how many you want. Fucking hate this. We want to know. Oh, but wait, it gets better. There's no one thing that I guess if I could do, I hate this. <laughs> like this farming the goddamn store for the fucking interest in the product so that yep. you know how it's to manufacture so you can pre sell it for the previous two weeks before they fucking get it. Oh, yeah. I that's, fucking see, hate that's that. The thing now, too. <laughs> so, whatever you see on Sunday, whatever, everybody listen to this podcast, you are like, Oh, I fucking gotta have it. I gotta have this new thing from games. And I'm paraphrasing and I'm just being bombastic and over the top because I love games workshop too. And I got all sorts of games workshop miniatures, but I kind of feel like I'm past I like the point where clearly lo- lots of people at this company. I like, and there's, you always got to remember when it's something like this, there's somebody who stood there saying, guys, this is bad. Don't do this. Somebody, yep, somebody, somebody was no, fucking there. I don't think they do anymore because I think they have lost all the people control. No, you're right. Like, because you, I think they've lost all checks. You've showed checks and balance. You showed us the job listings and what they're asking for employees. Yes. And you're right. And so like, there may not be anybody left, but anyways, but that's, it's not like the whole company thinks the same way we're talking. Hey, so it's, when we say GW, it's like, Obviously, we're talking about trade sales right now. We're talking we're talking about these sales reps. We're talking about who they funnel up to directly. And this is a thing they did when they launched Knife, which was horrible and fucking We did we had a whole podcast about it. GW on trial. We're back to that right now. Anyway, so continue. What's so they're doing that shit again. So so yeah, so basically they are sourcing. So by Tuesday, they have used every local game store to forecast the interest in that week's new releases, right? And then that Saturday, when they all go up for pre-order on Games Workshop's website. That's when they get the order? They have not verified the numbers back to game stores yet to... So a uh, game so, so theoretically okay so the so it's just they're just not even hiding it now they're saying no they're just not they're, they're not, just even, not even hiding they're not even hiding anymore they're saying right. they're saying tell us how much tell us the interest thousands of accounts we're farming yes. you for the interest and you have a deadline to get, fill out the spreadsheet so we need within we, two days we want to know what the interest is so but yep. we're going to post our presale on our website yep. before we even continue the dialogue and communication on like what your numbers and requirements are. Like we, we just took that information and ran with it and we posted it here already. So you're not even hiding it through timelines, through, through, through wording. Nope. I mean, stores can pre-sell, pre-sell it to their people, but there's no guarantee. Nope. You can't take and money. That's that. That was the whole, uh, that was the whole fiasco. It's like you can pre you can take orders. You can have people write their names down, but like 
Yep. Motherfuckers got fucked early 2019 because of this shit. Because they were like, well, I just took I mean, in. I, t- I paid my rent this month because of this dope ninth edition release. And because uh, I pre sold everything. And then GW sent me literally allocation. Yep. Like they sent me six boxes. And now I have to like give people their fucking money back. But luckily, a lot of the community was like, no, no, leave it in my credit. You know, like shit like that. Like right. community came together and was strong during that. But like, Yo, man, come on, GW. I, this is the one thing. This is the one thing, Wyatt, that gets me fucking my blood going. This fucking thing. This shit is fucking irritating. God damn it. I mean, st- stores can sell it, and you're still going to get the emails in your inbox from, from so, all the mail or if you're, So if you're, if you're new to Games Workshop and you have a game store you love, and you're hype on a, a current pre-release, and you find yourself in a position where they're asking for pre-orders... Know that a solution has already been farmed for this, which is you can even talk to talk to your, your owner about this, the store owner about this. You'd be like, hey, like I'll, I'll put my money down on this, and let and if they seem like yeah, we don't know if we're gonna get it, just be like, hey man, and put it in my account, and I'll buy, some, yeah. I'll, I'll get something else because like this is where we're going. This is this has happened before, and people went out of business because of shit like this because the for like a year of practices like this. So like. I mean- we're going into yeah. that territory again. So there is a solution that had already been workshopped. Open those dialogues with your fucking your 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 local beats lab because it's gonna get rough otherwise. I'm not I'm not asking you to believe me. Just talk to your local game store. Yeah. They're gonna tell you the same thing I'm telling you. And you may or may not sympathize with them, but I'm just saying, like, try to spend your money in the it, you know, if you like your game store, you don't mind them holding on to a couple extra bucks, you know, maybe for a couple of weeks till you get something you want. Yep. Star, know, star, star, star credit, man. Like, you do something. Like, it's God. You know, and it, it's just, it's just weird that they keep advancing this, this narrative of, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. We gotta constantly ma- maintain control, maintain control, maintain control. And you know, maybe they will. Maybe they will set aside the appropriate amount of stock for these stores. Yeah. And we haven't seen it. We haven't seen this program go into effect yet. We haven't seen if it's going to work. Yeah, the thing is, they they already made this shit. It's like they're allocating it. That's what they're doing right now. They're deciding how much they're willing to give to the stores based on the interest so that they, like you said, direct sales. They're looking for the bigger piece of the pie while maintaining the minimum amount of connection to the boots on the ground stores while farming them thousands of these accounts across the country for that interest. And this is real interest. This isn't like people doing thumbs up on a Twitter post about a new release. This is people who literally said, yeah, I'll buy that. I, I, I want to buy that. Put my name on a list. This is, this is the kind of data that companies pay millions of dollars for. Yeah. This is highly valuable Intel in marketing. Worth. They want within two days. Worth tons of fucking money. Like this is completely different. Like and it's fucking it's upsetting as fuck. Just don't fall for it. That's that's what it comes. Just don't fall for it, guys. Just like literally. I mean, is it? It's so, not. It's not illegal. It's not illegal. No, not call, at all. No, no, no. I'm trying to think of the right way to say this. So, if we were to ask our our audience to say, like, make your voice heard and email Games Workshop about this, oh, it's not about, illegal, right? No, a call to action. You, you can do a call. Yeah. You can do. You just gotta be careful with what you're asking for your call to action. Mm-hmm. Just, like, make, just make sure be what, like yo ddos them make sure yeah, don't what, do that yeah don't do that. Call, your call to action must be fair balanced and legal yeah that's you why i'm always like vote, vote with your, your hobby displeasure knowledge. about this practice don't that's be it. mean this is like right to your congressman this is like yeah because like, i mean like we keep saying this over and over again and i feel like they keep doing it over and over again it keeps getting because worse nobody's guys complaining about it nobody's actually saying like hey games workshop kind of being a little bitch right now maybe you should stop we're all stop buying your product so maybe if you email them don't say that don't be mean you can quote why you can say why yeah, you, co- you tell them i said that they, yeah. they still haven't fired me they probably won't you know you actually tell, tell yeah. james workshop he can suck my dick like all that stuff it's direct quote you didn't say that i said it but really don't be mean just tell them that you don't like this and they should stop doing it but email them, like flood their email. Because mm-hmm. that shit will make them understand, like flood their Twitter page, flood their email. Be like, oh, this is a problem. Like if they, if people just keep buying stuff and nobody complains directly to them, they don't know that we don't like this. 
Yeah, it's, it's like it's like training. It's ne- it's like training a fucking dog, man. Like you know what I mean? Like they don't know anything you don't tell them, dude. Like they're gonna just keep barking at the door unless you fucking figure out a means in which to fucking. And so like, do something, man. Fuck, dude. It's upsetting. Sorry, Rob. I didn't mean to side so- you. No, it's, it's, it's all good to hear. Um, so, hey, Kenny, all come in full circle. Who was the first guy on YouTube to talk about GW's business practices and uh, kind of expose like... It was you, man. Inter- You're, it's always you, dude. You're- no, it actually wasn't me on YouTube. You know who it is. The OG. I don't know. Who- do painting tutorials. Buy Painted? Guess who's back. Buy Painted's back? Oh, my God. That dude's a legend. Posted his first video in eight years. Oh my week. god, I missed him. Yeah, that's new. He's back. Whoa, that's fucking intense. That's awesome. Said his, I got chills. I got literally got chills. Said fuck. his kids, uh, kids getting into Warhams. He kind of explained what happened, why he left. Spoiler alert: GW's being assholes. Bro, I missed uh, that. I missed that guy. And. uh he also mentioned his 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 lady was making fun of him because uh, he wasn't he wasn't making the money after <laughs> after they, they they took his account away. And, he wasn't uh, making money after they literally after he literally didn't have a job. <laughs> yeah, because you know, <laughs> G dub policies, uh, but they never make you sign a predatory NDA or yeah. Or, you know, just do a lot of passive aggressive things. Anyways, buy paintings back, y'all. Check it out. Check out the channel. All his tutorials are up. All his vlogs are up uh, where he actually talks about some of the Games Workshop business practices that he himself experienced. He was the very first person to do it over on YouTube. Nowadays, we get we got all sorts of YouTube stuff all about it. All about opinions. This, this, dude's, the, this dude's the progenitor, though. Like he's He is. Yeah. He is. He's, he's a very, he's very one, talented he's like individual. He's the OG. Yeah, he is he the is. literal OG. Like, this guy is the guy. Him and Lester Bursley. Yep, Lester. Yep. It's the OGs. Fuck. So, that's, uh, well, that's an exciting segment, Rob. Fuck. Is that is that it? Is, that, do, is there any more? Gosh, I don't know segment? what else I could put in here. Nah, you fucking oh. nailed it. That was an exciting <laughs> news segment, bro. Thank that's you. Cool. Oof. I even, I even hobby down some paint bottles. Dog, that's gangster. Nice. So let's hear from our com- uh, let's do a commercial break here from our sponsors real quick. And then we'll come back and we'll kick it over to Wyatt and do some uh metal watch. Baron of Dice.com, the official dice sponsor of the Long War podcast. Use promo code Long War5 for 5% off. If you're looking for a superior dice manufacturer, then look no further than Baron of Dice. Custom artwork, faction representation, and crisp razor edge square dice. Remember to use promo code Long War5. Again, that's Baron of Dice.com, the official dice sponsor of this podcast. For the best game aids and peripheral tools for wargaming, check out our friend j15games.com. From wound counters and dials to faction rule trackers, these are the coolest tools out there. Designed to be functional and intuitive, these tools help you stay organized and speed up your game. Their flagship product, the nesting, movement, and combat tool, is absolutely amazing. A magnetized measuring widget that splits into three different size tools for every situation. And you can get it in eight different colors. J15 also offers custom order dice trays made from hardwood and leather. Check them out at j15games.com. That's j15games.com. And we're back. Why? Strange, yeah. strange things are afoot at the Circle K oh, yeah, in dude. Florida. Florida, it's the worst. It, it it is. I've heard it said. It's like <laughs> I've I've actually heard people from Ohio say Ohio's just like Florida, but worse. But then some people oh, tried yeah. to backtrack on that the other day, so I'm not sure which <laughs> one. <was right. laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna uh, let him know bold. about that later. <laughs> he was having internet trouble. I know he was, was very like, he was very upset yesterday. He was so was like, salty. Man, maybe uh maybe other train derailed and like spilled acid all over the internet factory up there, dude. Like I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> he was so mad when he was like trying to get in the yellows. This is just janky. It's just like rubber banding everywhere. We're all just like literally in the game playing it. We're like, well, try ch- maybe change your settings, your monitor to this. He's like, I have a crack up in here. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> We're like, oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> oh, God. Uh. 
my, my man doesn't want to hear right now. We're sorry. Oh, that's that, that's, that's that honey badger life. Man, I'm going to rip into him later. It's funny. It's that, it's that honey badger life. You know what I'm saying? He knows uh, if he's, he's listening to this, he'll be listening to this tomorrow and he'll know who we're talking about. <clears throat> anyway, sorry, man. Catch us up. Florida changed the game forever. The meta yeah, dude, some wild results from the uh, Tampa US Open. And uh-huh. it's really cool to see. Um, first place, uh, Jeffrey Kolodner. Kolodner. Hopefully I say that right. Um, pulled it down with Sisters of Battle. One US Open Tampa with Sisters of Battle. That's so Huge fucking upset. awesome. Dude. <clears throat> yeah. Did he know he was playing Sisters of Battle? Yeah. Did he know? I mean, no one told him that. No, he doesn't. He has like eight games with it. I hope he did. <laughs> I mean, he, no one told him the math, though. No one told him the odds. Yeah, dude. Never told him the odds. Never told him the odds. He just goes in there and fucking owns it. We did get a little intel, though. Shout out to one of our friends, uh, One Plus Says, who sent me a little boots on the ground information because like, I'm not caught up on sisters specifically. But apparently, the big uh, strat is literally a strat. Uh, Suffered a sacrifice, hollowed martyrs, strategic ploy. Uh, and this is a interesting kind of reverse angel sacrifice. If you guys are familiar with that old stratagem from ninth edition, that was pretty popular for a lot of high tech fucking blood angels, which what they were doing was they were forcing you to fight the character and not the unit. Well, this is a stratagem that forces you to fight within engagement range, uh, an infantry unit or a walker unit. Like, so you can uh-huh. use Vol or people like that. You can get in these fights and then like pull all the attacks to the unit next to her. So she's on it. So you think you have like this dope shit or the inversion, whatever you need. It's very flexible. You could throw a little throwaway character to the fight and be like, all your attacks here. You can't do nothing. So like, cause that's an infantry unit. So like what an interesting, like, I mean, obviously that's how this strategy will be utilized, but I forgot how powerful that's, I had personally experienced yep. a, a success with the angels sacrifice in many matchups that were super strict, super tricky by pulling that fucking out of left field, man, and pulling it down in like these clutch moments. And so it's really a cool stratagem out of the sisters book, which is obviously not the entire, because you all, it only works in one circumstance, but it's just cool to know that that was being one utilized. Word. Yeah. But what that winning list you said had a bunch of the usual suspects though, right? Yeah, like it was, it's really cool in this. Um, I mean, you can look up the list on uh, BCP and all that, but I thought it was nice that in this Metal Watch article, they um, posted the lists for first and second place. Mm-hmm. It's pretty nice. Um, the world leaders. Yeah, so the sister stuff, I mean, it's all like things you would expect to see in a sister's army. In a it modern really, sister's army, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it doesn't like skew one way or the other. It seems very um balanced as far as like your unit uh composition uh it's a little hero heavy uh they have like morvin and saint celestine judith erida um palatine and an image of fire image of fire i don't know how to say that imagine of imagine imagination um the uh and you know battle sisters some emulators retributors cascaders mortifiers paragons Seraphim, just like one or two uh, of all these units, just big toolbox. No, it's it's what I expect from modern lists. Those are some tough units. They've always they've been tough for a few editions. It's good to see them on the battlefield successfully winning a pretty solid of solid mm. fucking W, man. Like shit, but we were just talking about chaos. Being the best army in 40k, try to prove that shit in the podcast. And L and then sisters and world eaters and Eldar make it into the top three. Yeah, the top 10 was wild. Like sisters, uh Eldari, World Eaters, uh CSM, another Eldari, cast or regular Space Marines, Tyranids, Imperial Knights, regular Space Marines, and Black Templars. What? So di- it's a diverse mix-up, man. It's crazy. 
Like yeah, it's, just looking around at some of these other events that happened, uh, there was another big event uh, in Canada that was 102 players. So it was a big one. That's big, yeah. And Orcs pulled that one down, which is wild. And I guess the way the pairings worked and it being five rounds, uh, there was three undefeateds. So your podium was Orcs, Tau, Sisters. All undefeated. All, another all another Sisters entry, a Tau entry, and an Orc entry. Mm-hmm. Bro, it's getting diverse out there, man. That is mm-hmm. exciting. P- post the great fucking the balance update, a shift has occurred. And they even said in the video that uh, maybe they uh, maybe they nerfed a uh, couple of factions a little too much. Like custodies, I heard that. Yeah, like they, they did say that. Like they over maybe they over overcorrected on the custode the, the custodies a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So so apologies to anybody I called a, a giant crybaby over custodies nerfs. I yeah. still play them, even when the company acknowledges that they may have made they may have gone too far. Maybe, maybe, maybe you you can be whiny, if, and I won't I won't chastise you anymore. So that's not directed to you, Rob. I know it's not because I wasn't complaining. Yeah, I only complained about everybody with the home rules with chaos nights. It's like it's like you, you can't keep. They've already got so many nerfs. You're gonna home rule them, then give me back hitting on twos and give me back sixty points. You want to re-roll, your rules, re-roll you everyone. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's going to be a little weird because, you know, Games Workshop is pulling all this data, but their data is inherently skewed if the tournaments are using like home rules for terrain and like certain rules interactions. So it's like. You hope they're they smart enough to figure that out. Yeah. Seems like all they do is just look at data and if it doesn't meet their like. The, the tablets from on high, they just change things. <laughs> that doesn't sound like Games Workshop at all. They've got an old, old spreadsheet and Venn diagram and the old balance beats lab. Yeah, I mean, we've established that it's, uh, you know, a, they kill a chicken and it runs around on a like a bingo board they have in the, in the back. And wherever it lands, that's what they do. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is accurate. I feel like. What was the? Uh, what was it on South Park? They have like the the pool with manatees, and the manatees grab like the the balls with stuff written on them, and that's how they make shows. <laughs> yes. In their hot tub. Why yeah. they're in their hot tub? Uh, Monument Hobbies in chat mentions the Ouija board. That sounds right. Yeah. That's accurate. So that's a pretty big spread. I mean, so worldly, and so the chaos army. There's a another chaos entry, but only one in the top ten. So it didn't. It's not taking over. Eldar was back in there, but we're seeing other armies and factions climb up. Like this, Tal is climbing up to power. Orcs. Yeah, I think we're starting to get back into the rhythm of like. Um, We'll have a balance change. The balance change creates list archetypes. People figure out how to counter those list archetypes, which leads to different archetypes you know, to com- compete. Then we get yeah. another balance sheet, you yeah. know, right? So it's like CSM came out hot with their list archetype. Uh, turns out they're really good into Eldar. Um, and then people are like pivoting to deal with that CSM threat, which means possibly less Eldar on the field, which means other people who have struggled against Eldar are rising up. You see how like mm-hmm. meta works. We are the meta. Our play mm-hmm. habits is half of this. Our reactions. Mm-hmm. So this is awesome information, man. So you think, I think, I think Tao is good. I think Tao, I've seen a lot of people talking about Tao. They're yeah, hopping on Tao. Yeah. I mean, like Tao are all of a sudden, um, Competitive, and you know they're still really good. Tau won a big tournament this weekend. Yeah. Um, which one was it? Uh, 40k in one in Spain, Massachusetts. Oh, was it or Maryland? Ma is is Ma Massachusetts or Massachusetts? Yeah. Uh, this one's only a 21 player though. No, hold on, let me go. Uh. See, there was one in England that Votan won. 
Denver GT with 63 players, CSM one. Uh, one in Washington that's CSM one. In Washington, huh? I think it was overseas. Uh, it's on the Meta Monday posts if it happened. Where's that? Is that? Oh, no, I guess they got their own site. I forget. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Anyways, Tal being real good. Orcs popping up. Orcs being good. I always Fantasy enjoy. Fantasy Fanatic. Oh, I lied. They got third. I just automatically discard, dis- disregarded the first two placings of Eldar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oopsie. I feel like Eldar is in a good place. Like Eldar is respected across the table because they're dangerous, but they're not OP as shit. That's what they're not OP as shit, but they're still yeah. like I feel like the thing that most people want that like if you you know like some players they want their faction to be OP as shit, so they don't have to try very hard and win a lot of games, right? Ah, but I could see that most people. Who play this game casually or competitively? Mm-hmm. They want their they want their faction to be dangerous, but not OP. Because like there's there is like some competitive integrity where you're like, I want to win based on my merits, not mm-hmm. OP yeah. bullshit that needs to get <laughs> FAQ'd. Um, but you still don't want to have to like sweat your dick off because your faction sucks right now, you know? Like you want to feel dangerous. Yeah, that's a what's well said. You don't want to be too OP, but just OP. So you want to be secretly OP. That's me. I want to be secretly OP. You want to have secretly large volumes of OPness. All the OPness. Mm-hmm. Well, that's an exciting. That's, that was. I mean, that's exciting. I feel like. I think, we've done it. We've done our content. 40k, 40k is looking good. GW looking scandalous. 40k looking good. So at least that IP is fucking balancing itself out. Oh, it's about normal. Uh, about a normal week. No, no, no. So Wyatt also played some uh, tabletop simulator, and so I did. I finally got some games in. There you go. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's uh, we we did a whole bit on the uh, tactics discussion about tactical cards. It's long. Yeah. It's long. You deck flipper. The yeah. long and short of it is I'm biased. I recognize my bias. I'm going to have to do some introspection. Get over it. But to be a goddamn adult and do some introspection. Yeah. I mean, I could sit here and rant that, like, oh, it's fucking random objectives, bullshit, but um, just got to figure it out. Got to get good. Okay. Nice. Get good, scrub. Love it. But uh, that's awesome. So now I have to play a game. So I do plan on playing a game. I'm prepared for one. So I even built my Lord of Skulls over the weekend. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's a chonker. Yeah, he's a fucking beast, son. I'm down. I just need two more, Doc. Be good to go. Man. Make sure you magnetize it. I did. Future proof your shit. I did. I mean, I didn't do it for that. I did it for transportation. I glued, yeah, the, gun. I glued the guns on them. Yeah. yeah. You gotta have them like at the waist. That's like the best place. So you just pop into a few pieces. Yeah, yep. I got his arms just so just because I know they'll break otherwise. And I like to move the arms around, punch things, you punchy know. fists. So, yeah, rock them, sock them. But we did it. We good did. job, good job, guys. Uh, so, why you want to take us out of here, Rob? So that's it for this one. For exclusive content, early access videos, and more, make sure you head on over to thelongwar.net and become a veteran of the long war today. Oh wait, PS, we got we got new dice coming soon. <laughs>